What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make custom labels and annotations for your data set. And we're going to be getting images for your data set from Google Images. You can use any Google Images you want. And I'll show you how to download them in mass super quick so that you can then use an annotation tool called Label Image to draw your annotations on the custom images and create a custom data set for your custom object detector. Super fast, super easy, and let's get into it. First, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. It helps me grow, and you'll be up to date with all the latest YOLO content. And then also smash that like button while you're at it. It'll help me grow the channel, and it means a lot to me personally. So let's get into it. So in order to download the Google Images, we need the help of a Python script and some JavaScript code. So you're going to want to head over to my GitHub repository, GitHub, the AI guys code, and head to my download Google Images repository. I'm going to link this down in the description below, so you can just scroll down and click on this as well. And we're going to go ahead and clone this. So we're going to copy this. We're going to pop open a command shell, a command prompt, and just go get clone and this is being wherever you want to clone the files to and we're going to paste the link in there and we're going to go ahead and that'll clone the code needed so now we can cd into our download google images folder and run the command code dot which if you have vs code installed this will go ahead and pop open the folder so now we can go ahead and see that it has four files one is the readme and the other is the python script download images our console.js and the requirements. So right after you've downloaded this, you're going to want to go ahead and do pip install dash r requirements.txt. And this will go ahead and download all the requirements necessary to run these commands as I already have them. But if you didn't have them, this would go ahead and get them so that you can now download the Google images accordingly. So this console.js is going to be what we're going to actually run in Google Images to go ahead and get us the URLs for every single one of Google Images files. And I'll show you how to do that. I want a first disclaimer that I got this code from a blog post, which I will go ahead, PyImage search. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the description below as well because I did get the code from him, but I'm gonna do this tutorial. So what the console.js code is going to do is it's going to pull down jQuery into the JavaScript console and use the Google API to query the URLs. And then it's going to write the URLs to a text file, which will then be used by our Python script to search those URLs and download the images into a folder. So that's the basis. So now we can actually go to Google Images. And this is where you're going to want to type in the query for whatever types of images you're looking, whether it's dog, cat, snowman, I don't know. I'm going to do a classic not hot dog, hot dog detector from the Silicon Valley TV show. So I'm just going to go ahead and query hot dog. And then I'm going to pop over to, to Google Images. And so now here comes the bit where as long as the images are loaded, our console.js code will get them all. So you'll see that as I scroll down, more hot dog pictures will load in. So see more are loaded in, our taskbar is more space. So as long as they're loaded in, we'll be able to access them and load it again. So you want to keep scrolling down until the quality of the images or, or the images become less relevant. So if the quality of images, like this one's not really a picture I would want to detect, but some of these are, they're good. These are kind of getting iffy. So once that quality of image really depreciates to a spot where you don't want to detect it, you're going to want to stop there. And then you're going to go ahead and just right click on screen, scroll down to the inspect, and you're going to go click on that and open up the inspect. And then you're going to want to hover over the console tab and go ahead and click on that. Don't worry about any warnings that pop up here. That's just Chrome being dumb. Um, and now is where we're going to go back to our code our console.js code, and line by line, we're going to go ahead and copy, go back, paste, and hit enter. That's good. And we're just going to go ahead and do this line by line. Paste, enter. 
And so this is getting jQuery and getting the elements. And now we're going to, this will go ahead and grab the URLs for all the images. So now we have the images and now we got to write them to the file that we want to save it to. So yeah, you got to make sure you go line by line. Oh, I missed a line there. There we go. And this is going to go ahead and generate a urls.txt file that has the URLs of all these images. And then now we just got to run this final dot click, which will activate it, and we should see it download. Perfect. So we see that urls.txt seems to have downloaded. It's going to go in our downloads folder, and we'll show you where to move that. So I've popped up my two file folders. This one, I'm just going to go to downloads. We can see our URLs. And then this is our root directory for our download Google Images repository where we cloned it. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag the URLs over and we can get rid of that. So now we have it inside of our cloned repository. And now comes for the Python script. So we're going to open up our command prompt again. And you're just going to write, actually, first things first, let's go ahead and create a new folder called images. This is where we're going to save our images to. And just in case you're downloading multiple classes, like multiple different queries, I'm going to make a folder called hot dog. So now we can go ahead and run our Python download images.py dash dash URLs. And this is going to point to our URLs.txt. And then our next one is dash dash output. And this is specifying the folder to save it to. So I just created images dash hot dog. And then you're just going to go ahead and run it. And it might not output right away because it's going to be downloading quite a few images, but you'll see right away that if I and actually go into hot dog, you can see that they're downloading and the images are actually going to download. And great thing about the download images, if we look at the code for the download images script, it will actually, at the end, it will try to open all the URLs. And the URLs that cannot be opened from opencv.imread. So if ones that are not JPEGs, it will actually go ahead and delete for us. So we don't have to do that. It's automated. that It will delete any of the garbage images that are in a weird, full, uh, weird like file format. So let's see still going it's still downloading because it'll it'll stop running when it's finished um, but you'll see that it's, we're getting quite a few images and it saves them all in this nice format of uh, incrementing the file name by one so you can see it's got oh it's still going it's got over 150 Im 150 images right now it's still going because we scroll down so far on the hot dogs page it got quite a few images, but if you just do it right away based off of not scrolling down, it'll download by default 100 images because that's what Google shows. So if you're just looking for a small data set of like 100 images, you can just right click and inspect right away and that'll get you 100 images. So we go back to our command prompt and we can see that it's finished downloading and it's actually downloaded 300, over 390 images. Oh yeah, it went up to 398 and then it went through and looked for the images that OpenCV, Open Computer Vision, couldn't open. If it couldn't open, it just goes ahead and deletes them, says those are garbage, we don't want them. So it does that. So it actually cleans the files for you. Um, and then I recommend that you just you just go in, open it up, and just do a quick manual search if there's not too many by just right-clicking and scrolling through and just cleansing to make sure, you can go pretty fast through this, that they are all indeed good images of what you want to classify or and what you're trying to detect because you're going to want to filter out any like garbage like if there was a picture of a actual dog and not a hot dog in here or something I would want to filter that out and make sure I looked at that um, so that's good so now you can see how you easily we have a data set of over 300 images super easily and now comes to the actual drawing the labels 
customly on the images themselves. And for this, I'm going to use a tool called Label Image. Label Image is an open source tool, and I'm going to hop into that and show you. So we now have the repository open for Label Image on GitHub by the guy named Tzu Talon. So we're going to go ahead and just clone it. It's a free tool. Go back to our here. CD back to where we do our code and do git clone. Paste. And we're going to go ahead and download that. We'll wait for that to finish. So once it's downloaded, CD into the directory. And now it needs a couple more requirements. So you're going to do pip install. Right here in the repository, it says pi qt5. This is just the graphical user interface that lets you pop open the UI. So this is going to go ahead and download. And then when this is downloaded, we're going to do the second pip install. And it's lxml. So perfect, we got that. And now we're going to go pip install lxml. So those are the two requirements for this. So now that we have those two dependencies, we can now go ahead and run this line right here, which is pi rccc. This just downloads the resources required by the user interface to open up the tool. So we're just going to go ahead. That'll run. It won't output anything, but it's finished. So for label image, you're going to want to do open a code editor as well by doing code dot for VS code because you're going to want to now classify or create your custom labels.txt. So I'm just going to call this classes.txt. And if you've done darknet before, you know that for this file, you just go and write on each line, you write per one line a class. So I would do could do dog, cat, and just keep going. Whatever this classifier you want to make, Classes wise, you put, write them at one per each line. But I just have hot dogs, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now we can go ahead and open label image up. So once you've gotten your class files, now we can open up label image. So Python label image.py takes in two parameters. The first is the path to our images. So ours are up one folder into download Google images, images and hot dog. And then the second parameter label image takes in is the classes. So now we can just do classes.txt. And you can run python label image.py without these two parameters, and it'll just open up default. But for us, we are trying to do the hot dog classifier, so we're going to do these two files. When we run it, it goes ahead and opens up label image. So this is the user interface. It's very simple and easy to do. So now you're going to want to go into the left. And at first, it's set to Pascal Voc saving format for the annotations. But if you click on that, it'll change to YOLO. So we want YOLO annotations. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And then now the easiest part, you just go create rectangle. And you just drag. And boom, it's created it. It's hot dog. OK. And we just go, you just keep going to next image. Oh, wait, first you want to save. And we want to save it to the hot dog, this into the hot dog images folder. Yep, that's good. And it's saved. And now we can go to our next image. And you're just going to keep on doing this. So you just keep on going create rectangle. And I'm actually going to do one around both of these two hot dogs, see if I can get it. Oh, didn't drag. So yeah, it's just drag, and it's that simple. You're just going to keep dragging. Hot dog, perfect. Create rectangle. Hot dog. And you're just going to keep doing this, hitting save each time. And then just keep on going to the next images. Next image, next image, next image. This can be a time-consuming process, since I said I have over 300 images. But it's a must for object detection. You have to have good labels on your image, especially if you're doing a custom object detector. This is the only way to do the hand labels and be effective. 
Um, so yeah, you're going to want to go ahead and do this, but you can do it pretty fast. You can do like 500 images probably in an hour. I know it sounds like a lot, but you have to do it. But once again, this is the way you just create the rectangle box, try to make it as tight as possible, drag and press OK, and then save. It's just like that. You have to do it and you can do multiple different labels if you have them. And you'll see that if we go into our hot dog folder, it's going to save them in the TXT format that we need to train our custom YOLO on. So once you've done that and you've saved all of your images, you're going to want to go ahead and just drag them all. I would do them all when I have them all saved, but for time. And then you're going to want to just go to your darknet. So I have it in repos, darknet into your data folder and you're going to create a new file here called object obj for where you're going to hold all your images and then just paste them all in here and then follow off from my previous video on how to train a custom YOLO object detector and that'll run you through how to, to train your custom detector and do its, have its detections, the inference for those and be able to properly classify your custom classes. So I'll put that link to that video down below. I recommend checking it out. And I hope you guys like this video. If you could please drop me a like, it helps my channel enormously. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have some cool, awesome YOLO videos coming soon about how to do it with TensorFlow and how to deploy your custom object detector using Docker and Kubernetes. So if you're looking forward to those videos, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. Thanks. Bye.